Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I know most of you in the room, but for those of you that don't know me, as she mentioned, my name is Katherine Virgos, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Ripon Medical Center. Um, I'm a nurse by trade and came to Ripon about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, before that, I worked for another healthcare organization in the state, which um, I've been banned to say. <laughs> it's the other A um, for about nine years. Um, before that, I was a, an officer in the Navy and a nurse in the Navy and was stationed out in Washington, D.C. Um, originally from Fond du Lac, went to Marion, sorry, Ripon College table, uh, went to Marion University. And so I'm back here, moved back about 12 years ago, brought my husband, and um, we have a three-year-old. So um, I'm happy to be here today. I appreciate your time to learn a little bit about the new Ripon Medical Center. As I've been out in the community, I've heard a lot of questions, and so we thought it would be a good idea if I came and did some presentations and talked a little bit about where we're at, where we've been, and where we're going with our new facility. Um, as Tim mentioned, we really are um, just blessed to be able to build a hospital here in Ripon. Um, you know, during this time of healthcare reform and the economy and everything else going on, um, it's almost unheard of to be able to do something like this. So we really are blessed as a community to have a brand new hospital with um, the best in technology. So I'll talk a little bit about it, and at the end, if you have questions um, or comments, I'd be happy to, to talk. So where did we start back in June of 2011? Um, if you remember, Ripon Medical Center became part of Ignition Healthcare. We affiliated with Ignition Healthcare, which um, part of that affiliation agreement was that we would construct a new hospital. Our board of directors for many years um, had talked about a new hospital here in Ripon, and um, so it was very important as we looked at a, at a partner for um, a healthcare system that um, that partner would help us achieve the goal of a new hospital, of which Ignition Healthcare um, has committed. In July and August of 2011, um, our retired CEO, Bob Foley, some of you may or may not know, and our current CEO, who is Steve Little, um, went out into the communities that we serve and met with multiple service groups and um, you know, people within the communities to understand where they wanted our hospital. We were looking at a couple different sites within Ripon. We were looking at, um, on Highway 44, the greenery site. Um, we were looking at our current site where it is now over um, off of Eastgate Drive. And then we were also looking, do we do something on the west side of Ripon? And so as they went out and talked to the community, um, they asked the question, here's our options, where would you like us to be located? And about 70% of the people said that they would like us to be located where you see us building today. In January of 2012, we purchased the 20 acres where you see our site today. Um, we purchased that land, which is adjacent to the city of Ripon, uh, or adjacent to the Ripon um, uh, Fond du Lac Regional Clinic, where some of you might know Dr. Godier. We call that, internally, we call that Dr. Godier's clinic. Um, so <laughs> um, that is the clinic, right, as you're entering Ripon from the east. In September, we broke ground and we had a ceremony on the site, and some of you, um, in the room I can look around that I had conversations to after September and before April. Um, you know, you broke ground in September, well, what happened then? And there was a lot of site prep work that needed to occur before we could actually get in the ground. As a requirement, um, as a hospital within the state of Wisconsin, you have to have two water lines coming to your building. And so the work that you just saw along Douglas Street, or along um, 23, excuse me, uh, that was the secondary water line being brought into the hospital site. The, the site also did not have any utilities. Um, and other things coming into the site, so we had to bring all of that in. We had to pave um, or um, gravel a road, which is the new Parkside Road, and it runs perpendicular to Douglas, Douglas Street and Eastgate. That will be the actual road that the hospital is on, so we had to put that road in. So there was many, many, many things that needed to occur before we could actually get in the ground. We were scheduled to get in the ground in March of 2013, but if you remember March, it was very wet and cold and snowy, and so um, we had to delay that until Oct or April. Excuse me. So we began work in April on the footings and the foundation, um, and following that, we had to get some state approvals. And um, you know, throughout the process, we go to the state for different approvals on the construction plan. 
So I don't know if any of you have been out there lately. The best view of the new site is off Douglas Street. I wanted to mention as well on Douglas Street, um, there was some improvements that were done and that was part of our negotiation with the city as well as we purchased the land, is that we would provide those um, enhancements on Douglas Street. So Agnesian Healthcare did fund that, um, that work as well. And so the best view of the new hospital is to drive up Douglas Street. Lori probably won't like this answer, but pull over to the side of the road <laughs> and you can, you can look and see, that's where you can get the best view because right now the cornfield, as most of you see, is in the way to actually see the, see the progress of the hospital. Um, so our facility is progressing quickly. They started construction on the west end of the building and they're moving towards the east. And so they needed to pour the footings, the foundation, the concrete slab, and then they started the steel and exterior work and that's what they're working on right now. And so the steel and exterior work is moving from west to east and by the winter we will have it enclosed because during the winter we will have, um, they'll be working on all the in interior um, drywall and the stuff that goes inside the building. So our emergency room is going up first. So as you look from Douglas Street, you'll see um, a tower, yeah, a two-story tower, two and a half story, and that's actually the emergency room entrance. Um, and I'll show a little bit of our views here in a minute. Um, so I mentioned before, the utilities are in, the water's in, and the enhancement has been done to Douglas Street. So what happened behind the scenes of the hospital? I always joke to people that over the last year and a half, I've really had two full-time jobs. <laughs> Um, I've been operating the hospital and I've been building a new one. And so um, it's been exciting work. We've engaged a lot of people in the planning of the new hospital. We not only worked with our internal people, such as our leaders and our associates and our volunteers and our physicians and our board, but we also um, met with different focus groups in the community as well. We used our volunteers as patients. We invited other people in, other families and patients that use our facility now to really understand as we're designing a new facility, what's important to them? What's important as you use our hospital? And what we found was that we needed to simplify our wayfinding. So if you go into our hospital now, we're a building that started out, you know, very small back in, I don't know, 1900 something. And we've grown and kind of added on since then, but nothing really makes sense. We've just made it work with the building that we have. And so we knew with our new design, we really needed to simplify that. And we needed to make some changes as far as where departments um, were in the building, um, close to the main entrance, where they were adjacent to other departments. And so we spent a lot of sessions on where are the departments gonna fall for efficiency, to be patient and family friendly, um, and so what does that design end up to look like? And I'll show you in a few minutes. We also developed a mock patient room and it's still um, in progress today. What that means is in our lower level, we used an old large storage space, probably about the size of this room. And we actually put a patient room in there. We put walls up, we put a bed in there, we put a bathroom, we put, we walk in and it looks like a private patient room. Um, it's not all pretty with, with um, trim and paint or anything, but it gives you an idea of the size of the room and where things are gonna be in that room, where the bed's gonna be placed, where's the sink, where's the bathroom, where's the medical gases. And we've had anybody that enters that room, whether you're a physician, a nurse, your um, environmental services, nutrition services, x-ray, whoever comes into a patient room, we had them come in and bring the things that they use. So for example, medical imaging would come in with their portable x-ray machine and um, our environmental services would come in with their food trays, and we had them try, try out the room and put stickies on things where they wanted it moved. You know what, this countertop really needs to be moved over a couple inches because I can't get my portable x-ray in here. Or have you thought about you know, cutting off this corner as you know, from a therapy perspective because we're trying to get people to move from the bed to the bathroom and this corner really inhibits that movement. And so we've made changes based on their feedback. We also had the blessing of St. Ignis Hospital doing a private room project um, back in January of last year. And so we had um, the opportunity to interview their nurses, their staff that goes into those rooms and say, what would you have done differently? What are some of the lessons you learned in this project that we can you know, incorporate into our project? And um, we took those, that feedback and those ideas and we've incorporated that into our, our room design. So well, that room will stay functional um, as, we, as we move forward in the project because as we get our new beds or we have what's called a nurse server that pulls out into the hallway with supplies so that we don't have to bother patients while they're trying to sleep to you know, stock supplies in their room. Those are the kind of things we'll continue to test out and have our staff test out um, until we move into the hospital. 
Um, we've also been working on design, the actual design of the rooms, picking out furniture and millwork. Um, we'll be doing an exercise with some color choices um, fairly soon that will involve our, our staff and our medical staff in as well. So there's been a lot of work behind the scenes on not only planning but also designing the space. And then coordinating the move. So we started back in January with different task forces looking at how are we going to move from this hospital to the next. And I remember when I first rolled out those task forces, people were saying, Catherine, it's like a year and a half before we're going to move. Why do we have to do it now? And shortly after we began the work, they realized how much, how much detail goes into moving a hospital. And there will be a certain amount of time that we need to function both hospitals at the same time. And so we need to talk about how are you going to move things? What department moves first? We can't move imaging because, that, because the emergency room and the inpatient need imaging. You can't move an ED and inpatient because they need one another. So we have to talk about how are we going to do this? And then how are we going to set up for that first patient? We need to make sure that every room is stocked. We need to make sure that everybody is trained. Um, all sorts of detail that goes into making it successful. So what will our new hospital feature? Um, it'll be about 120,000 square feet. Our current facility is about 85,000 square feet. A majority of the increase really came in private patient rooms. Right now, we have 25 beds, and those are semi-private. So there's two beds to a room. That was the old design of hospitals. And since then, a lot of research has shown that if you go to private patient rooms, people heal faster better, they have a better experience because their family can be in there, it's quiet, you have better privacy. And so um, we moved from a semi-private to a private patient room. We also, just being in an older building, you get passes from the state on certain codes you know, that you have to require. There's certain vestibules that, you know, in front of an elevator that have to be a certain number of feet. Well, because we're an older facility, we can get a pass on that, but when you build a new facility, you can't. And so the square footage that was associated with just bringing things up back up to code um, was fairly significant as well. Some of you may have seen in the newspaper that our Foundation for Ripon Medical Center is funding a wellness center. They've um, pledged to, to give us $2.4 million to um, construct a wellness center along with our hospital. And so that project is occurring at the same time and will open up at the same time as our hospital does. We've also incorporated two labor and delivery and recovery postpartum rooms. So these are the rooms where you have your baby, you can postpartum and recover and go home right from that room. You don't have to switch rooms. Um, those rooms are, um, We've taken a couple of our current rooms in our hospital and switched those over and redesigned them currently today because we're opening up OB in our facility now. But in our, in our new uh, facility, we have also planned for two of those rooms and all of the services that go along with that, a nursery and all those nice things. Um, one of the things that we learned, I mentioned before that we did a lot of work around where do departments need to be um, in relation to one another as far as patient care, efficiency, and what we learned was that um, right now our surgical department is on the second floor. And so 70% um, of the surgeries that we perform are outpatient surgeries. So that means people come in and they go home the same day. And so through our discovery, we found that we should really put our surgery department on the first floor because people want to come in and they want to come out and they want a discreet exit. Right now, if you have surgery at our hospital, you may have noticed that you get, you get wheeled out the front entrance where your neighbor might be coming to pull up. <laughs> And it's not always um, the best experience, and so we wanted to enhance that through a new design where we could provide for a more private setting for you to have surgery and be, you know, go out to your car in a, in a more private manner. And then through our new design, we also, um, right off the main entrance, you can get to the rehab department, to the physician office spaces, to medical imaging, to the lab, and so um, you're not trailing through hallways and down corridors to try and find the departments. All of the departments really lie right off the main entrance. And I'll talk a little bit about the design in a minute. Um, so there's a lot of technology being put into our new facility as well. Um, Agnesian Healthcare actually has, um, is light years beyond other health systems um, as far as the technology that we use. And some of those are medical charting on stationary computer monitors in each patient room. So right now we have these carts, you know, these laptop carts that we roll around to every room, and we document on our electronic health record in the patient rooms. Now in our new patient room designs, we'll have a stationary computer in every room where we can 
you know, chart right at the bedside. Um, the opportunity with that is that when you have carts that are on wheels, you're relying on wireless. And if any of you have wireless at home, um, you, kn you know that it's not always the most dependable. And it comes on and off, and so when you have them hardwired into the patient room, you never have to worry about that, and it saves a lot of time. Um, we'll also have a new nurse call and phone system. So right now, if you've been in our hospital, you push the little button on the bed, and it beeps, and it goes out to our, um, our health unit clerk, and then they contact the nurse, and then the nurse comes in by you. Our new technology will be where the nurse carries a telephone, and you call for that nurse from your bed, and the nurse picks it up right onto her telephone. And so she can get back to you, or he can get back to you at much quicker. It doesn't have to go through two or three people before the nurse knows what you need. We're also putting 42-inch flat screen TVs in each room. Now, this sounds great. You know, not most of us don't even have 42-inch flat screen TVs at home. But um, this is much more than a television. Um, you know, it does have some gaming and movies and all of that stuff. But it's really meant to be interactive and education. We'll have, um, you know, say you're a new diabet diabetic that comes into our hospital. We will have, through our televisions in each of the rooms, an opportunity for you to learn about diabetes. There'll be um, education on how do you control your diabetes, how do you give yourself an injection, um, how do you count carbs, you know, what are the best foods to eat. And so there'll be a lot of educational opportunity for you as you're lying there in your patient bed um, to really learn about your new disease process so you can get well. And then we're building in some infrastructure for telehealth. So telehealth, some of you may or may not have heard of, but it's a, it's a, um, it's a technology that you can use to bring specialty services to areas that you may not have them before. So it's used through elect, um, electronics, a lot of time robots or televisions. But um, I'll give you an example that, that would make sense to you. So say you've got, um, you know, we're in a rural area here, and you want access um, in your patient bed to a pediatric cardiologist. Well, a pediatric cardiologist is not going to have a practice in Ripon, Wisconsin, because the volumes aren't there to, to um, be able to support that practice. However, you could do telehealth, and you can have an arrangement with a pediatric cardiologist out of Milwaukee or Madison or wherever they may house, and be able to still get that service back here in Ripon, but through technology. So that, that physician could assess you while you're laying in bed based on a robot. They have stethoscopes and ultrasounds and all sorts of things that um, connect to them so that, that that physician can provide services to you right here in Ripon. And so we don't have specific services that we have outlined yet that we'll use for telehealth, but we know we will. And so we want to have the infrastructure built into our new hospital so that when that day comes, we're prepared and we can offer you all the services here in Ripon so you don't have to travel for those. So what's coming up with our construction? I mentioned before, we'll continue that exterior work. We're hoping to have it all enclosed by winter time before the first snow, when we never really know when that is, but hopefully not, hopefully later rather than sooner. And then from there, we'll continue the interior build out of the hospital. We'll continue to plan for the interior design and ensuring a smooth process for that move that I talked about before. And um, we will be keeping some updates on both the Ripon Commonwealth and Agnesian.com. We'll be doing blogs on both of those websites. So at any given time, if you're wondering where we're at and what's new with the project, um, you can go to either one of those websites and um, pull up the blog, ask a question, um, interact with somebody. Um, typically, it's me working through Shelly. <laughs> if you have questions that she doesn't know, I answer them for you um, to talk about the project and to see where we're at with the new hospital. So before we have questions, I just kind of want to walk through some of the um, photos that I brought today to give you an idea of what our new hospital will look like. Um, this first board is looking at, if you're coming in from Douglas Street, you can see the emergency entrance is here, so I'm driving in from Douglas Street, and here's Parkside, which is the road that the hospital is going to be on. Um, this is the emergency entrance, you can see here, and then you can also see over, in, over here is the main entrance. So the main entrance will actually be right on Parkside Street, which is that new street. The emergency room entrance will be right off of, it'll be on um, Parkside, but you can view it from Douglas Street. Does that make sense? Um, this is a main entrance coming from Eastgate. So if you come in by Dr. Godier's clinic and you look at the new hospital, you can see it from this way. So that's the main entrance, and this is the wellness center entrance. And the wellness center will have a separate 24-hour seven day a week entrance as well, because if any of you use our facilities now, 
you know that's a 24-hour facility. This is an aerial view here. The tel this is looking at it from the back. Um, the wellness center here, rehab, we have the clinics, our inpatient space. This um, window set here will be a dining area that overlooks the pond that, that's on our property. And then these are just some images of how it will feel, some of the architecture of the interior of the building. So it's not specific to color or furniture or anything, but it just gives you an idea um, of how it will feel. And so this first picture here is as you come in the front entrance, the ceilings will be about 12 to 13 feet high, and so there will be a sense of height. Um, there's also going to be windows from the front entrance looking into that dining section that I talked about back here. So they'll have a sense of light and airiness in the building. Um, you can see there's a greeter station, and this is right off the main entrance is rehab and podiatry and orthopedics and some other clinic space. This is going up onto the second floor where there's more clinic space, some administrative space, and that's the wing looking down at our inpatient area. So, a lot of information. Um, I'll entertain any questions that you have, comments. Bill? Catherine, we originally were planning an MRI uh, unit. Is that still going to happen? Yes, right now we um, contract with an organization that provides us with two days a week of MRI. In our new building, we will have a fixed MRI in one of the rooms. And so that will be our own equipment. It's there 24 7 for us. Lee? What is your target date for making the move? And mm -hmm. secondly, obviously you have to, you can't stop for a week and say, come see us when we move. What is your plan for um, basically turning the off switch? Great questions. Those are um, details that we're working through right now in those task forces that I mentioned. And so I don't have the detail as far as when we're going to make the switch. But what I can tell you is that there will be a period of time that ho both hospitals will be operating at the same time. Now there may be um, services offered at this hospital and not this hospital within a certain period of time. And when I'm talking time, it could be hours to a day. It won't be weeks <laughs> by any means or a week. It'll be a very short time frame. Um, and those are all the details that are being worked out right now. But our target um, time frame is the end of summer, early fall to have first patient in our new hospital. <coughs> and it depends on our contractors and when they can get that work done. They've targeted end of summer, early fall. And as soon as they're done, we'll commission the building. We'll have all of our inspections completed. We will train all of our staff and then we will move our our um, operations. Yes, ma'am. Did you talk about the wellness center and some of the features? I did not. So wellness center is about a 9,000 square foot wellness center. So if, you, if any of you use our facilities today, we have the gym, which is our rehab gym, and then we also use it for fitness. In our new facility, there'll be a separate rehab gym that's used for rehabilitative services for patients, and then there'll be a wellness center that's used for the community. And that will have um, fitness equipment, so you know, bikes and um, treadmills and weights and all of those sort of things. We'll have a classroom for spinning and yoga and some of those other things. But we'll also incorporate other wellness initiatives as well, like cooking classes. You know, how do you cook healthy and how do you want to train for a 5K? And you know, so some of those other wellness um, initiatives, we'll be doing some classroom activities in that classroom as well. And so we're trying to take not only a fitness perspective, but a wellness perspective and looking at the, the mind, body, and the soul. So stress management, um, you know, whatever you can think of that would make you feel better, more well, uh, we will offer in our wellness center. And we look for feedback from our community as far as what the needs are, you know, what, what are the issues are out in our community that we need to um, develop programming around. And we develop those programs through our, what's called our Journeys program. And that's a community education program. And so we bring that to our wellness center to be able to educate our community on how to be well. There will be some equipment that comes with us, and so that will be um, part of the planning of when do you move it and how. Um, but there are a majority of our furniture, I should say, there's some medical equipment that we have that's really, really good. We just purchased, for example, our digital mammography. We just purchased it a couple years ago. It's a fabulous piece of equipment that will come with us. 
And so that, those details will have to be worked out by these task forces that I mentioned because there is going to be some medical equipment that comes with us. Most of the furniture will stay and we're still trying to decide what we want to do with that furniture. We may be able to donate some, we may be able to do some buybacks through some of our vendors, we may do other donations through, maybe we'll have an associate day where they can come through and take a, whatever they want. <laughs> we haven't really decided all those details, but we do know that we will have some that will be donated, some that will go with us, and then others that we can work with our vendors on getting credit for, so. Yes, it is not. It's a it's a regular MRI machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, with the telehealth, that's certainly going to be new to mm -hmm. our community. Uh, what is your experience with it in dealing with insurance companies? Are insurance companies up to speed with that? Um, they are. There are specific provisions to each insurance carrier as far as what they cover for telehealth. And so as we plan telehealth services for the new, you know, in the years to come, we always take into consideration what are people paying for. What are those insurance carriers paying for? And we're not going to implement something that, you know, isn't going to be paid by your insurance company because they're kind of all over the board right now as far as who pays what. Medicare is a payer of telehealth. They're a very strong payer of telehealth, and typically the insurance carriers follow Medicare and their practices. And so other larger companies, you know, like your Humana and some of those other ones, they also cover telehealth. And so we look at who our payers are, what they're covering, what criteria they have for coverage, and then we incorporate that into our planning. Other questions? Okay, well thank you very much for having me here today. I appreciate it. Again, if you need to know what's or want to know what's going on with the new Ripon Medical Center, go to agnesianhealthcare.com or thecommonwealth.com and we'll have blogs on there keeping you up to date.